Today we're going to check out Grand Archive TCG. This is a fairly recent Kickstarter. It was a project that has been going on for quite a while. I mean, the Kickstarter launched, like, I'm going to say two years ago or something like that. And product came out fairly recently. I got a couple Kickstarter boxes and some starter decks. Now, this is not a Kickstarter box. This is Alter Edition. Other than that, it looks identical to me. And I haven't opened my Kickstarter boxes, so I'm not sure what the actual differences are gonna be when we actually start opening this. I'm assuming that there are gonna be some full arts and gold signature cards, and maybe there are just some revisions to some card abilities and balancing and that sort of thing. But we're gonna crack out, open this whole box. This is 24 booster packs. And look at that, we got a box topper. That's pretty cool. Oh no, that's sorry, that's, a, that's just a booster pack. It was just uh, out of line there. Here's our, looks like some kind of promo pack that comes with this box. Really neat, so we'll open that up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just open like one pack slowly, and then we're gonna kinda go a little bit quicker through the rest of the packs and really look for those hits. Before we get started, here is our art set that we have. So these are the four different characters you can get on the booster packs if you're looking for an art set. Here are those promo cards that came in the box. I'm not sure if these vary from box to box or if they're all exactly the same. So this is Spirit of Fire, Spirit of Water. So I would guess these are just the exact same, uh, maybe alternate arts of spirit cards you can get in the booster bo uh, box as well. So we got Spirit of Fire, Spirit of Water, and Spirit of Wind. All right, let's get cracking. I like when these booster boxes have just 24 packs. Flesh and Blood is like that as well. Instead of 36, they do the 24. And that's just because it's easier for me as a content creator. 36 packs is a lot to do all in one video. I kind of like to break those kinds of boxes up. All right, so we got Lorraine Blade Master. Let's just take our time on this first pack. So this is a normal level two champion. And it's got your abilities down here and some uh, flavor text. So it looks really nice. This is just a, a standard car. We got a big C here, so I guess that's a common. Let's keep going through there. We got another common Flame Lash Subduer. So this is an ally, so another kind of character you can summon. Bobble of Abundance. This is an item. Okay, so you got characters and items. And now uh, what makes Grand Archive special is it's got the really anime vibes to it, but it is a more of a Western style in terms of gameplay, like Magic and Pokemon. So think about Gwai Schwartz or like Buddy Fight, Card Fight Vanguard. Those all have like busy text and a little bit of a different gameplay style. Like they have the big numbers, right? With the multiple zeros after a lot of attacks and things. I'm not really familiar. I haven't played any of those kinds of games. So I'm not sure exactly uh, how those work. They do look a little bit more complicated, a little bit uh, less familiar than something like this, Magic and Pokemon. So that's really how they build themselves. And I think it was a good uh, idea because we have a spell card there. It definitely sets it apart from other anime style games like Weiss Schwartz uh, that are a little bit less like Magic and Pokemon. Empowering Harmony. So there's an action. So you had spells. Uh, spells were a kind of action. Okay, so you have like characters and then actions that your characters take. I really like the art on these. And then the design is really good too. Uh, it's very, very clean. And another thing that makes this and Magic and Pokemon a little bit different than like Weiss Schwartz and uh, those kinds of games too, is I think the just the overall design of the cards seem a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit simpler, more inviting to kind of learn how to play. And there aren't isn't as much going on with the abilities in the text box, I think. That's just kind of my general impressions. I'm not an expert by any means. I don't I don't even really play a lot of games. So uh, mainly a collector. Common, and then here we have, uh, okay, so now we're in the uncommon slot. We have one uncommon, Patient Rogue, one of the uh, assassin allies. And then this is an uncommon. So we got two uncommons, Tempest Silverback. Erratic Bolt is our rare. Okay, so I like how they did that. They put the rare right at the very end. So with Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, with Dream Book I just opened, they had the hit slot somewhere in the middle. And Pokemon, they do that too. And it seems like Magic, they do uh, the rare, the hit slot at the very back as well. I could be mistaken about that. I haven't opened too much Magic lately. So we got a little bit of an idea of how this works. And if you look at the back, they do give you an idea here. So you can get a Collector Super Rare. There are only four of those different kinds. Ultra Rare, Super Rare, Rare. So four levels of rarity, and then you've got your uncommons in common. So I would guess that maybe one of these uber rares, these like leveled up rares, would be in the rare slot, or maybe you can get a rare plus one of those upgraded rares. We're gonna just find out. So we'll move a little bit faster here, but we have a little bit of a better idea. So we have a champion. We had a champion at the very beginning in our last pack too. So it'd be interesting, do we get a champion in every single pack? All right, so we got our champion, and now we have our common actions. We've seen champions, actions, allies, which are other characters, I guess, that support your champion. And their ally there, 
ornamental great sword. So you have weapons too. So you have characters, actions, weapons, really loving the art on this. I mean, nice colors, great anime vibes, and it looks really, really, again, just distinctive with that more familiar card design, a little bit more like Magic the Gathering than Force of Will, Buddy Fight, Card Fight Vanguard, those kinds of games. Restorative Slash. And notice here the colors are a little bit different on some of the borders. Maybe that has to do with the elements, like the whether they're water, fire, and uh, what have you. Peer into mana, we got an action, common, champion. Another, so we got another champion later on in that pack. So we've got some common champions. I wonder if they're all common or you got some other champions or maybe just like you just get uh, different art or four art versions of some of these champions. Favorable wins. I don't know if it's like flesh and blood where basically the champions are, you know, not rare cards to hit, but there are like collector versions of them. All right, now we're in the uncommons. Conceal looks nice. And another uncommon. So we had two uncommons, I believe, and then we have our hit. Yeah, so ooh, we got a super rare here. Check that out. So we got SR, and that is the last card in the pack. Wow, look at that. Gildas Chronicler of Asa. That looks really great. Love the art on that. That is by Han Chu, and looks really cool. Uh, I like the colors on it. Not a foil, so you can get super rares that are non foil. That is very interesting to know. I didn't know you could get like certain rarities that are above rare in non-foil. That's good to know. So, you know, first first box, I do have another one of these. Maybe, and I do really like the game. I would like to get uh, some more of these. And we're going to start kind of moving a little bit faster now. Look at that. That is Snow Fairy. And it's a hollow regular rare. And we still have another card behind this. So you can get more than one rare. And now the question is, will this be an upgraded rare? Or will this be... Okay, an uncommon. That was interesting. So we had a foil slot before our uncommons. Okay, and that foil slot can be a rare. That is good to know. We've got Hasty Messenger. That looks great. That's like a fire. So here we go. We've got the elements at the top. We've got fire, normal elements, water, and wind, I guess, because those are the three elements we got in our promo packs. And then lastly, for our regular rare hit slot, we did get Shroud and Mist, a rare action. All right, so we got Lorraine, Wandering Warrior. This is sort of the signature character for Grand Archives. So that looks really great. And then we got, oh yeah, we're going to be kind of moving kind of faster here a little bit. And we'll slow down on some of the art that maybe I haven't seen before or that something kind of stands out. So I think that there's Lorraine there doing an action. And then we have our Uncommon. So this would have been our foil slot if we got one right before the Uncommons, Deep Sea Beast Bonder. Melodious Flute, and then we got Excalibur, Cleansing Light for our rare. Let's keep going. What do y'all think about Grand Archive TCG? Have y'all gotten any of the Kickstarter stuff? Are you planning on getting some of this first edition stuff? And I don't know anything about like an expansion that would be coming after this. I was really surprised to see how fast though they got the first edition going right after the Kickstarter stuff started going out. It was like there was an immediate announcement almost or, or news that first edition was out. And then before I knew it, it was available up on eBay the, to get the uh, first edition regular stuff. So I was like, I'm not going to open my Kickstarter. There's our Life Essence Amulet. So we got a regular foil common. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to open my Kickstarter stuff. I thought about it, but then I was like, oh, first edition is already out. I'll just buy that and the, the same cards anyways to check out. So then we got our two uncommons and we got a channeling stone for our rare. I do like uh, a lot what I'm seeing so far. Really like the art and these are pretty fun to open. You know, now that we have a understanding of how this works and I've got to say the foils that I pulled so far, that Snow Fairy, really beautiful card. The foiling does look really nice. Uh, it's a little bit layered. It's not real rainbowy from what I could tell. So let's see, yeah, we always start with a champion. Always at the very beginning there. There's Library Witch. I remember that was some kind of promo card. Maybe that was a big spoiler that they did at some point. I don't really remember. Uh, but there's a lot of cool stuff in Grand Archive in terms of promos right now. They have those metal cards. All right, so no foil there. Got Melodious Flute, Sink into Oblivion. That looks really nice. Look at the blues on that. The colors really pop on these. They look really good. And then a regular Hurricane Sweep. It looks like we have a pretty tough chase uh, in here. I mean, we've opened a few packs already, and we've only gotten one foil rare. And then, like, even our super rare that we hit was a non-foil. So it seems like there's gonna be a pretty good chase to maybe some of this really, really tough stuff. And I don't know what the pool rates are like for these at all. They tell you the different kinds of rares, but they didn't, at least from, I didn't look at it too closely, but it didn't seem like they showed the pool rates. All right, uncommon, uncommon, increasing danger, and we've got rending flame. So yeah, you know, just a lot of these packs, just, you know, standard rares. It looks like with having non-foil rares of a lot of this stuff is gonna make it easy for players to get the cards that they need. So that's good. 
And of course, you know, if we're looking for those super rares, we're looking for those gold signatures, there is definitely chase for collectors as well. And not just in the Kickstarter stuff. I mean, I think maybe there's some chase to this first edition stuff. I don't know what the uh, print run is on this. I, I really am an uninformed. I've just been kind of buying stuff and, and uh, enjoying opening it and not doing too much uh, digging into some of this stuff. Here's a ultimate, ultimate rare. What is this? Ultra rare. So this is right before our collector super rare. However, it is non-foil. So that would be interesting to know how expensive as one of these in the non-foil version. These heroes all look really cool. I guess this, one of the really interesting things about this, here's our rare for this, regular rare, Chalice of Blood. I guess one of the interesting things about this game that does make it different from Magic the Gathering, I mean, they have planeswalkers and things, but here you have your champions. And I don't know how different, uh, or how similar that is to the planeswalker system or to the hero type class from Flesh and Blood. Because uh, they do have weapons in here as well. I'm not sure. I'm sure there are some similarities to maybe both of those games. And then, you know, quite a few differences as well. That helped to make it very distinctive. Light Weaver's Assault for our rare there. And we're closing in on half the box here. So trying to move a little bit faster here. I'm really not trying in these openings to do like 30 minute, even 20 minute openings, even for like a full booster box. I really want to make them a little bit uh, faster than that, a little bit more efficient. Of course, for the first time that we open one of these games, I do like to take it a little bit slower, especially, you know, it's the first two packs or so. Really check out the commons and uncommons, see how the booster slots work, and then we can kind of go a little bit faster from there. No tokens or anything that you have to pull out from the front. So um, I actually kind of like that. I mean, I end up maybe just kind of recycling some of this that stuff and even having to separate it from a regular, like common to uncommon bulk pile. So um, I'm not uh, missing any kind of like weird fluff like marketing cards and uh, even like the art cards and that kind of thing. And here are the token cards. So Conduit of the Mad Mage, here we got a regular rare. I thought that was something actually that was gonna be a little bit higher because the art is just mind blowing on this one. This one looks super epic. And this is an ally card. Looks like maybe someone who would help out Lorraine or something. We're halfway through the box. We only have one common foil and one regular rare foil with this snow fairy over here. So let's just keep cracking and see if we can get something at least another foil of some sort I'm sure we're going to get. So I guess we get two more foils maybe because we're halfway through the box. And it would be nice if we get a foil in a uh, leveled up a rarity. All right, we got Persian Flames, Fiery Momentum. Interesting you only get two uncommons. I think usually you get like three or four or something in a, in a regular booster pack. And then Disintegrate here uh, is our rare. So yeah, I do really like this game. You know, there are so many TCGs right now, especially a lot of them have been coming through Kickstarter and... The thing about Grand Archive was they took so long. I think I think it's been two years since I backed this, and I just completely forgot about it for a while. But it seems like a lot of the these TCGs on Kickstarter are taking a while, and there are, there are just a lot of issues with like uh, shipping and logistics and stuff. And I understand that. I'm trying to get some stuff framed right now, and I've literally been waiting for months on just a single frame material that they've ordered and you know the the guy at the frame shot tells me that they are getting told you know they're they're working on them they're going to be coming at some point and we did they just we just keep pushing back month after month you know we'll, we'll check back next month and hopefully that stuff will get in and, and shipping and logistics is just insane right now uh in all all areas so i'm i'm actually really sympathetic because i do see that uh, and believe it and understand that that is an issue. And if you're, you know, printing stuff overseas and everything, that's gonna, you know, it's it's gonna be tough for shipping sometimes and logistics, distribution. Again, we're now like just a quarter of the packs left about and not hitting any other foils. Really, really liking the anime art on these though. It is a little bit distinctive. Like it's a little bit, I would say maybe softer. I don't mean that in a bad way than like a typical anime you'd watch on, on television. Like there's a little bit more, I don't know how you would say it, like, uh, illustration uh, kind of techniques or effects going on that that give it a little bit of a different, more illustrated look. And I like that. It's not like it's a screen capture from an anime show that they just put like maybe, maybe they do that with like the Naruto TCG or something, you know, that would be an analogy, I guess, there. Like if they were just to take a screenshot, some of these anime TCGs from the show and put it on a card, like these are clearly just like drawn first uh, and made to be like a still illustration. And that I think, gives it a little bit more of a unique, uh, a very artistic vibe. And I'm not sure if I'm, I'm really representing that right by, by words, you know, putting that into words correctly, but, but it looks nice. I mean that in a really good way. Bobble of Mending. So there's our rare regalia item, Tamer Bobble. So kind of some kind of special item there. 
Now I do have another one of these boxes and I might get some more. I, I wanna say, I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head that this was like $90 or something for a box. I don't really re recall, but I'm enjoying opening this. And if you are enjoying it and you know, uh, uh, make sure you definitely hit the like button, let me know. And we will definitely keep doing more Grand Archive TCG. I like looking through these cards. It's an easy pack to open. It's very straightforward with the slots. There's our rare. And it looks like there's gonna be some chase to this. So maybe we can hit up some uh, a few boxes, maybe buy a few and you really just start kind of going through these and looking for some of those collector rares, super rares and everything. I like doing this a lot more. I remember seeing a spoiler for that. It looks really nice, that Weaponsmith. I forgot what I was just talking about just now, but this is definitely one of those games that uh, I would like to keep following and that I would like to you know continue keeping up with. And I think from where, the, from what the marketing looks like and how fast they came out, we, oh, check this out. By the way, it's a super rare. Yeah, it doesn't give you the odds for for how you uh, maybe can pull some of these cards. Maybe it's on the box. It, I think it's a good sign that they came out with a first edition product so fast after the Kickstarter. All right, check this out. Boom. So we finally got another foil fishing accident. Man, so that's really grim. However, the foiling does look really nice on this, and it does seem that there is some chase to these foils. So interesting that I think that's got to be the grimmest card we've seen in this so far. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't take this as like a flesh and blood as like an even MetaZoo has some, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, R rated cards. You know, this one seems to be a little bit tamer than that. And I think that's a good thing. I think this is definitely coming across strong with how fast they brought out that first edition pack, uh, first edition product. And again, I don't know anything about an expansion or anything, how fast that'll be coming out. And hopefully they are doing a lot gameplay wise to support the, the, the play for this because I know that's that's something you need you know I, for me I'm a collector right I don't play I, I actually have the Kickstarter starter decks maybe I'll get some first edition ones and try this out but uh, you know I know that you need a play community to really help keep buzz alive and create a lot of discourse around like what new cards are going to be more playable and how the meta game's changing and you know there's a lot of social media around people playing the game and watching games play out and, and seeing all these beautiful cards uh, together in a uh, some kind of game state, you know I, that's all really important to a card game. So you need both. You need collecting. You need you need playing as well. Uh, for me, I just kind of like opening these these packs and checking out the art and being involved with the story of the game. It, that's all a lot of fun to me. So we have three packs left. We did get three rares, and I you know I'm really glad to see that there aren't a ton of rares. I think I want to say they said something about that, like in their Kickstarter or something like they were saying they wanted to bring collectability back kind of like with early magic, how they had like like seventh edition foils are so rare, you know, in good condition now. And they were actually hard to get. And I, I see that here. I mean, the, these were I think there were more foils in like a seventh edition booster box than we're getting in this box. So the I think there's some rarity to, to some of these foils, even if they are in a lower uh, form, like a common or uncommon or any of the the levels of rarity, it seems like any of these foils are pretty tough to get. And, you know, I got to say that is really awesome. I like seeing that. So might have to double check, just kind of see like what maybe that snow fairy being a rare is going for. Maybe do you get like one rare foil per box? I wonder if that if they're like magic in that regard. Like, have I gotten my rare hit? And maybe you have a chance at a, at a higher rarity, but you only get one. I have no idea. Um, we're gonna have to find out. Look at that spark of light. That really pops. They have a lot of vivid colors. Um, it seems like the, the artists really know what they're doing with this. And it just seems like they have a good variety of artists uh, as well involved in doing a lot of this art. But you know, like a lot of other games too, they're making sure to keep a very uh, identifiable aesthetic with the game overall. Like you can, I'm sure you could go through and, and see the different uh, artists, various styles and everything that make them distinct and different, but they still, you know, they fit within the realm of uh, Grand Archive, which I think is great. And this is our last pack, guys. So let's take this a little bit slower here. We've got Veteran Soldier, Smack with Flute, Ignite the Soul, Invigorated Slash, Deflecting Edge, Juggle Knives, Favorable Winds, Pure into mana. There are a lot of commons compared. I, I feel like there should be like three uncommons maybe versus all the commons, but hey, I mean, common and uncommons are uncommon, so it makes sense. Uh, we got a young beast bonder. That looks great. Got all the animals there. Reckless researcher. And let's see what our last hit is for this box. Super rare, but I do not believe this is a foil. Nope. Bestial frenzy. All right. That does it. We've got a lot of chase to these hollows. That is very clear. Really enjoyed opening this. I do have another box we're gonna open very soon. Thank you.